we keep watching, David, for the place that we will see the break, right? Because there's been too many weird things, too much easy money for too long, uh, the, the cycle going on longer than many anticipated. Mm -hmm. You're looking at corporate balance sheets. Right, and it's not just where the, uh, how the money's been borrowed, uh, but also where, where's it gone? And it'd be one thing uh, if this whole cycle where we've had over $4 trillion of corporate bond issuance go to finance capital expenditure, and then you could say, well, we're going to have a productivity cycle. There's going to be some internally generated rate of return that's going to cover these debt surfacing costs. Right. That hasn't happened. This is the weakest capital spending cycle of all time in the context of the biggest boom in corporate bond issuance of all time. So where's the money gone? Two words, financial engineering. Stock buybacks. Stock buybacks. And that helps explain why earnings per share have been inflated. And that's the biggest reason why we've had this ongoing, very powerful bull market in equities in the context of the weakest overall economic recovery of all time. So it's a symbiotic relationship where you've got this massive corporate bond issuance financing stock buybacks. And um, it's a train, it's, it's really what I call smoke and mirrors. But when you're talking specifically here about you know, the spread between, say, uh, uh, triple C's and double B's right. and you're right it's and that's what happens is that this, that's the canary in the coal mine and so I mean I, you, when you talk about a game of musical chairs which is kind of what this is uh, the music stops somebody doesn't have a chair who's the somebody in this scenario because the folks that are the beneficiary of the buybacks are not complaining they're very happy to have stock valuations disconnect from the real economy which is basically what's happened here who who could suffer well uh, I mean who is holding on to uh, this corporate debt so you'd be talking about say it could be pension funds it'd be mutual funds uh, it would be uh, uh, insurance companies uh, and so a gamut of uh, institutional investors. It's not really a banking issue this time around. Everybody's always saying, well, the banks are in great shape. It's really uh, about the non-bank financial institutions uh, who are holding on to this. And then you get the spread widening. And don't forget that the financial markets are all correlated with each other. Mm -hmm. So once you start getting spread widening in one part of the corporate bond market with a lag it hits other parts of the corporate bond market, it makes funding less accessible. It starts hitting the real economy. And that's where the lag tends to hit the stock market. Remember that the problems in the mortgage market really started about six to 12 months before the stock market finally woke up to it back in 2007. And David, what about the fact at some point to financial conditions still being pretty loose? This GTV chart on the Bloomberg showing you the financial conditions remain pretty accommodating as of yet. So what would you say to traditional economists to say this is related to growth? Well, what's interesting is that financial conditions are, are absolutely accommodative, no question about it. Uh, why is it then that fourth quarter GDP growth looks like it's getting below 1% at an annual rate? I'm doing the bean count on the fourth quarter. I can't get my numbers above 1%. Uh, and then, of course, we slowed down to 2% last quarter. So economists love to talk about uh, easy financial conditions. Uh, and then these days, people tie it into, well, financial conditions are easy. Therefore, go buy financial assets. But the reason why financial conditions are easy is because of the boom we're seeing in financial assets. The question now I pose back to you is, where's the evidence that this is producing accelerating economic growth? Uh, if anything, I would say when you're taking a look at the broad gamut of numbers, uh, the economy is actually... Uh, in, in sputter mode right now in the U.S. Uh, I'm not seeing any signs. I, I, the OECD leading indicator is at its lowest level in 10 years. I'm not seeing any sign the global economy is reaccelerating. People tend to get so fixated on one or two months of noise. Um, but the financial conditions aren't stimulating the economy. I mean, if you're talking about financial conditions, negative interest rates, uh, you'd be looking at boom conditions in Europe right now. If anything, you're looking at the German economy, which is the engine of Europe. It's barely growing. So the financial conditions, as stimulative as they are, might be mm. giving you an impulse if you're an investor to go long risk, but it's doing nothing for real economic activity.